The Swanage Railway runs through some delightful Dorset countryside in the southern part of England. Today I'm joining the railway at Corfe Castle around about the middle of the line and looking forward to a day out riding trains and enjoying a snoop around the stations. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and welcome to another Linley's video. It is still early and the first train out is not even prepared. I'm expecting it to be one of the heritage diesel multiple units restored and cared for on the railway. Later in the day I have the delights of some steam haul services. There will be a real mix of sights and sounds to enjoy during the day. The line used to be part of the 1885 country services running down to the town of Swanage right on the coast as a branch off the main line from Poole through Wareham and on to Weymouth. As part of the London South Western Railway and then in British Rail days the Southern Region, the line was axed in the early 1970s. The signalman this morning has kindly let me take a peek in the signal box as he switched in its controls and made connection with the next one up the line. That's Northern Gates. Okay. Where the level crossing is. Till right up to that point which is about beyond the road rail interface at Northern, uh -huh. then that isn't track so not at all no until it gets to yak and that is just before the distance signal onto the main line ah that is the main line signal yep that's a distance signal yep. and all that is. that's track circuit of course yeah. pre yeah the diesel service is parked up on the bay siding and after some anticipation draws into the station ready to depart to begin its service. The ticket office is now open, so I can purchase my day ticket. This BR Class 117 DMU set is looking very fine out on the line today. Introduced into service in the 1960s, they have slam doors, which were then standard back in the day. It had a busy life out on the lines in the southwest and routes west from London. This set has been running on the Swanage Railway for several decades and really does fit in well to the style and character of the railway. They must have felt very modern and spacious when they were introduced with big windows and very clear open interior.
has a wonderfully preserved heritage railway. There's a nine and a half mile long line which runs through some beautiful countryside and especially snaking its way through the gap in the hills right here at Corf and past the old castle. The DMU set pulls into the bay platform. There's no need for loco runaround provision, of course. In the station is Eddystone, getting ready to depart with the first steam hauled up service. Not my train though, as for this next run I plan to return up the line on the diesel set to complete a run along the line. I'm here all day, so I've got plenty of time to see all the locos running, doing their thing. Stopping here at Corf Castle, we await the down train with 257 Squadron in charge. Just north of Corf Castle Station is, well yes, the castle. This section of the line literally cuts around and through a gap in the long ridge and the castle is perched right on the end of the ridge in a commanding position overlooking the gap. Norden Station is presented with the same nicely painted combo of green and cream, so tidy and well kept. 
The return back to Corfe Castle on the DMU concludes my first full run around the line. Stone draws in, but I'll watch it depart and await its return from Northern before taking a ride back down to Swanage. Although Heritage train services run from Swanage north to Norden, the tracks are now reconnected all the way back to the line at Wareham for special services. The intention, or at least their hope, is to extend the regular services through to Wareham. Eddystone has had a busy but chequered history. From a fine pedigree, the loco was designed by the engineer Bullard and built in 1946, just prior to the nationalisation of the railways in 1948. It is a light Pacific Loco 462 and ran for many years on the Atlantic Coast Express and the Devon Bell through to Salisbury from London. As with so many other fine locos, Eddystone was sent for scrapping in 1964 and was left ignored for 22 years. In a very poor and sorry looking state, 34028 was given a new chance to run on the rails again, but this chance took almost 15 years. Since then, Eddystone has needed further maintenance work, boiler overhaul and other TLC. Today, and lucky for me to see and enjoy, she's out in fine song, easily dealing with the load of carriages today.
Bullitt's design for the West Country class included quite a few features which were really unique. His valve gear was completely different and he shaped the front of his engines in a streamlined or air smooth design as it was called. These features were not always improvements and over the years of running many aspects were converted to become similar to more traditional things like the valve gear arrangements and the front shape with the large smoke deflectors as seen here today. Swanage station is the terminus and the line ends right up to the main road through the town. Today the visitors are making use of the fine weather and the whole railway has an enjoyable buzz about it.
at Harmon's Cross, there's a pause in the schedule to let the passing service head south. With 257 Squadron out in steam today, there are two massive engines in service to enjoy. More about this fine Battle of Britain class loco in a bit. Stopping here at Corf Castle again, I'll wait for the next service. Just behind the station, in an open area, is a place to relax, enjoy a snack, and today at least, tune in to some live music. Such a treat. time today to watch the world go by. Well, what I can see of the world, including some elegant engines and a busy DMU.
behind 257 Squadron, I'm off down the line again towards Swanage for the third time. This is an outstanding example of a Battle of Britain class loco. Another bullied loco built in 1949 and run on the lines in the south of England in the early days of British Rail. She ran out of London in her early days down to Dover and around Kent until the area was electrified in the 1950s. Moved then to the southwestern region, she was based in Eastleigh and worked trains down to Plymouth and into Devon. Withdrawn in the mid 1960s for scrap, she escaped from the cutter's torch and was rescued almost 20 years later to begin a second life running on heritage rails. For many years, 257 Squadron has been based here at the Swanage Railway. What a fine setting it is here for such a magnificent loco. And this time at Hermes Cross, Eddystone passes on the other track.
Out of Norden, I've got time to look around the field full of traction engines. Many are in steam and on active display. I don't know much about them really, but this giant one was absolutely showing off with its noise and energetic beat, pulling a massive load of logs at frightening speeds. I've happened to wander into the marquee for a pint and to listen to a few songs. From Norden, Eddystone is right on time taking me back to Corfe Castle. Back here, I've got time to look around the museum before heading off home. Thanks for watching and bye for now.